If I don't know you or you don't know me, my name is Allison Jones. I'm the studio manager at Contemporary Craft. Um, I've been on board since September and it's been a wild ride because we have moved and then we had the coronavirus. And here we are doing things virtually that we never thought we were going to be doing. Um, but we are so excited. I was just giving a little update on our building progress. Um, our very hopeful opening date is maybe early August, August 1st. Um, that means that, you know, our construction is complete, that our spaces are set up, um, and that all viral things are <laughs> under some sort of control. So, um, so we're really hoping that, uh, that that will be the case, but we, we never, never quite know for sure. So um, just like any, anything else, nobody really knows. So, um, so that's what we're hoping for. If you haven't been to Contemporary Craft, please come visit us. We have an amazing gallery with wonderful exhibitions. We have a store that really shows the finest craft um, in, in the country, in the world even. Uh, we have some extraordinary craft artists. And then we have our three studio spaces where we offer workshops. Um, we also have open studio available in all of those studio spaces during all of the hours that we are open. So you can rent time, you can come into our studios, you can um, use all of the equipment, uh, you can make with other people, which I think is a really important uh, part of craft is being a sense of community and being together. I think that's why everybody has been enjoying these sessions so much because we get to have that sense of community that I think we're all missing right now. So, um, so please consider coming to join us at Contemporary Craft. Um, since we have moved to this virtual platform, I'm really excited to tell you that we have two actual workshops coming up. The first of which is tomorrow. It is a contemporary paper cutting workshop with um, Jessica Brown, who might be joining us today. I hope she jumps on this call. Um, she shared a few weeks ago during Show and Tell. She's a fabulous um, paper cut artist. She will be doing an hour and a half workshop. All you need is a craft knife and some paper. Uh, it's just $20. I'll make sure I send the links to everybody um, when I send your follow-up email. So please consider joining that. And then the following Wednesday, I'm calling it Workshop Wednesday, uh, we're going to have a paper making workshop with Katie Dement, who is a wonderful paper maker. Um, when you sign up for the workshop, you are going to get access to a video that Katie is creating in her studio where you get to see her using some big time paper making equipment that actually Katie has on loan from Contemporary Craft. Uh, and you get to see how the paper making process happens. And then she will tell you what you can do at home to replicate that process. So you get to watch the video and then there will be a live one hour workshop with her where she will take you through the process and you will get to make some paper at home. So that should be really fun. That's going to be next Wednesday at one o'clock. Uh, again, $20. Um, so I hope that you'll consider joining us for one or both of those. We have one more um, craft show and tell that is scheduled for next Tuesday, but I think we might just keep going because we're all enjoying it and, uh, and we're having a lot of fun. So, um, so I think we'll probably end up putting some more of those on the calendar as well. Okay, once again, I think we are all becoming very Zoom proficient, but just in case uh, you're new to Zoom or haven't Zoomed that much, um, here are a couple important things. Mute, this is a, oops, a very important button to know about. Um, when somebody is talking, it's really nice if everybody else can be muted so that everyone can hear. The chat feature is something else that is really important for us on this call. Uh, it sort of looks like this. You can find it somewhere on your screen. Um, this is where you can type in questions while somebody is talking um, or just a comment. If you wanna share any information, all of that would be great. Um, and that's the way you're gonna tell me that you're ready to share something that you've been making. So if you are ready, send a chat to, to me or to everybody and say, I'm ready to share, or I would like to share, or yes, please pick me. Um, and then I will know who is ready to, to share what they've been working on. Um, there's a full screen option so that you can fill up your whole screen, which sometimes can be nice. And I recommend putting your, your view on speaker view. This will make whoever is sharing appear in the big box and everybody else will appear in little boxes. Um, and so that makes it really easy to see. Um, gallery view icon looks like this and that puts everybody in a little box um, and that's fine too it sort of 
Brady bunches everybody into little boxes, but it's harder to see uh, what the speaker is sharing. So I recommend speaker view. Don't forget to use your chat and also the mute button. I can mute and unmute people on my end and I will try to do that if we have any noise interference. So um, let's get to the sharing. Oh, also, if you are sharing today, please um, message, chat in your uh, website or your Instagram or any of the information uh, where we can find you online so that we can share that with everybody uh, after the fact, okay? Um, let me see, I am going to mm -hmm. Go in here and mute a few people who seem to be unmuted. And computer's a little bit slow today. We'll get this all figured out. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share with you. Um, I, I showed before that I have taken up crocheting during this quarantine time, which um, is very unlike me. I like hard materials and uh, and so anything that's soft and mushy just doesn't agree with me. But for some reason, crochet is just like um, taken over. I've become a fool. Um, and I think part of it is because I can sit in my living room with my family and just like watch TV and be doing something instead of being in my dirty basement with all the tools and stuff that is required for metal smithing. Um, so my latest project is my pillow. I'm very excited to have completed a pillow. And, uh, and when I got the insert, it actually fit inside the cover I made, which was a miracle, because sizing things is not um, something that I feel like I'm very good at quite yet. Um, but I made a pillow. It's actually a pillow that I am happy to display in my home. Um, this, is, this is big. This is a really big step for me. So that's my pillow that I'm very happy to share today. Um, let me see here. Uh, Ray Gold is with us and Ray has something to share and I'm sure it's going to be awesome because everything Ray does is amazing. So Ray, we would love to hear from you if you want to unmute yourself. Okay, um, well, it's been a very productive um, time actually. Um, I'm in love with two fiber people. One is Maria Fries who I'm taking now monthly sessions with. Um, she's in France. And the other, um, uh, there's one of our friends here, Debbie, who turned me on to this woman named Bridget Funk of Parallel Funk. Unfortunately, it's all in German, but I've been studying her pictures and I'm on a roll and I am using, uh, working on the techniques that I think that's what she's doing um, to learn new things because there are things that I never thought about before. So I'm so excited about all of this. And the weird thing is I had an aha moment on Sunday morning, Mother's Day, that for all the 30 years that I've been doing my machine work, um, and for the last number of years since 99 when it's all been in wool, I have all this wool that I've been knitting, had knitted, and and woven, used as woven um, yardage to shrink into garments, I have all of that that I can make into pre-felts or incorporate into my new work. So it was like, holy crap, you know, I've got buckets full of stuff, full of textures, full of shibori dyed material. So, and then I'm making masks. So I'll show you uh, Maria Fries's. this is from the last class. And it kind of looks like a seashell. And what we did was we scrunched up our wool to make this textured area. I added um, plastic over colors here that were resist that I cut open. And then this was extra and I just cut holes in it. So it sort of reminds me of a seashell. And I played with um, different colors when I was doing the different layers. Oh, and there's a nice big lump here. So that was fun. So then I went on to Bridget's site and I made this. And these were pre-felts from another project that I was, never did anything with. One side's blue, one side's red. And so I connected them onto stems. And then I made this lumpy bumpy 
Wonderful. I love the colors. I added um, little bits of uh, fleece to it and um, just played. And this actually has become a reversible um, checkerboard for uh, something called purple, violent purple or purple violent, which is um, happening in now with people who are at, being asked to do eight by eight inch squares. And uh, Penny Mateer is handling it, Mary Towner and the Weavers in the Fiber Arts Guild. And they're gonna be sent, it's gonna be like in a show, and then they're all gonna be sent to the congressman <laughs> later on in the year. So then I wanted to learn something else. So this, these are the pieces that I machine knitted into patterns and then shrank around stems. And here's a spike that I had. And so this is like the latest venture into um, the funk dumb, funk dumb. And then, um, and then I'm making masks. And many, many, many years ago, probably 20 years ago, I think I took a class with uh, Jam News Newberry, Myers Newberry. So these are the masks. This is the shape of mask I'm making. And uh, this is all shibori work that we did in a class one day. And I realized they were cotton. So um, that's what I've been doing for some friends. So that's amazing, right? The the objects are they meant to be just sculptural objects? Oh yeah, yeah. They're just, they're just things. These are just things. things. <laughs> they're so I cool. I have to shrink this thing down a little bit more, but it seems to be pretty stable. I love it. Hey Ray, do we have a new date yet for your workshop? No. Okay, Ray was supposed to teach for us in June. She was going to do a two-day, um, three-dimensional felting vessel workshop Beginner, for beginners. Um, be for beginners. So uh, we are we are in the process of looking for a new date that we can schedule with Ray because clearly she's amazing, and I'm sure that everybody will be dying to uh, to take a workshop with Ray. I I am. Um, because I love felt, I use it in my work, but I don't really know the felting process. So, um, so anyway, stay tuned for that because obviously Ray is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing, Ray. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Susan, would you like to share? Oh, let me see. Um, I got you, Susan, I think. Okay. Oh, oh, good. There I am. Yeah. All right. But I'm not seeing me in big screen. Oh, well. That's all right. I'll do it in this little screen. Okay. Um, everybody else can see me in big screen, I think. Yeah. Well, I, I got very intrigued by freeform crochet about two and a half years ago. And at the time, I decided I was going to do only freeform crochet. In the meantime, <laughs> I picked up two other mediums that I'm working in. But I had started something, and this is really like a year and a half ago, where I was using Freeform. And you'll see that I use something that they use, a lot of people use, the spiral. Uh, let's see, I've got things with the bullion stitch in it, okay? And this, these pieces, which are called scrumbles, are supposed to be sewn together to make something. So I finally did. So I'm going to now take my iPad and move it to show you what I made. Okay, can you see? Oh my gosh. How far back do I have? Can you see the whole thing? Maybe a little bit further so we can get an overall picture a little bit further there you go and down just a little bit oh my gosh can you see the bottom we can but we can't hear you very well right now susan oh okay uh, I'm covering up the microphone <laughs> okay so you can see that those are a lot of scrumbles and i'm going to go closer and show you what i've done Right through here is where I attached them together. This is knitting, 
just a very simple kind of open knit, almost net kind of thing. So that, open on the side. There's the back of it. And I, it's not totally finished. You can probably see some of the strings still hanging out of it. Now, last night I reached a big decision and I will show you just a second as the iPad goes wonky. I had thought that I was going to put sleeves on it. So I made, I had finished one sleeve was going to be right there. Got it. And then I realized it's too much. It makes it too heavy. So I'm going to leave it as it is. No, it's not too much. It's not too much. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, Ray. I hear you. <laughs> well, the good thing is I can wear it this summer with the uh, sleeveless. And then I could try it with the sleeves when it gets colder again, <laughs> which could be next week for all we know, more snow. Um, but this I made for me and it's taken me almost two years to do, but this time has allowed me, I can't even see what I'm showing here. Tilt, tilt, there we go. Uh, has allowed me to actually finish it. The bad part of it is now that I'm finished with it, I'm going to need another project. <laughs> and uh, not that I don't have many clamoring for my attention, but this one is took so long that I don't know what which one to go to next. And I have found, I did this all without a pattern, including the um, sewing together part of it. Uh, what I did is I cut a t-shirt apart and uh, then put another t-shirt on the bottom to, for length and just kind of laid the pieces out and we're using that as a pattern. And uh, good thing that yarn is so forgiving because when my pieces didn't exactly match up, they stretch. So when I put it on, we'll have to see if I'm puckered in places and stretched in others. Okay, so that's my big project. I'll be finishing up. Susan, it's really amazing. Um, we, somebody, Pam said that she likes it sleeveless and she thinks it would be great for an event opening. Perhaps, you know, an opening at temporary and uh, and Liz said it reminds her of some pieces that she saw at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Um, and Donna said once people see it, they will never forget it. Well, uh, this piece here, if it doesn't become a sleeve right away, just one last thing. Uh, I was working for Project Art as an artist in the library. And we were supposed to have um, an art, um, exhibition at the end of the teachers and I did not keep working on the other artwork so I think I'm going to make this be a piece of artwork because we're going to do it virtually and I'm going to have to find a name for it I was thinking pandemic blue um, <laughs> uh, or just composition in blues or because it is it's really abstract so i don't I know if anybody give this group that. another and give this group another 10 minutes and i think the names will be pouring in for you some name ideas okay give, give me name for this piece so i can like uh, mount it and take a picture of it and uh, that's uh, my artwork that i've been working on. it's amazing it's so amazing as a garment but they would be so beautiful just as wall hangings also i mean you just want to look at them um i'm going well, to I'm just going to hold back some of my resentment over the fact that I showed my little pillow and now you have to show this garment that is totally amazing. 
Um, you can do this. Easy. You can do this. Free form is so easy. You, you get a free it. pass this time, Susan, but it's not going to happen yet. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. Just. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe Thank we need you. to get you on the hook to come teach a free form crochet class at Contemporary Craft. Oh, well, um, deal. Okay. I'm there. All right. Excellent. <laughs> uh, oh, and somebody likes uh, Pandemic Blues as a name. They like it. Pandemic Blues. Pandemic well, Blues. Right. Yeah. <laughs> because it's got the blue, which is like what how some of us feel a lot of days. And then it's got these round things that could be viruses, right? Yeah. And yeah. with blue. Okay, well. Okay, good. Thanks, Susan. And uh, take other ideas, too. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. All right, we're going to throw it over to Donna. Uh, Donna, if you don't know, Donna is an amazing color, uh, precious metal clay artist, and I'm sure does tons of other things as well. Donna also is supposed to teach for us in June. Um, her workshop has been rescheduled for January 30th. So I know that's a long time out to wait until 2021, but hopefully the coast will be clear by then. Uh, so anyway, we're excited to have Donna share. So at least you can see some of her work um, and maybe it will intrigue you to, uh, to set aside some time in January. So Donna, throwing it over to you. This is the project for the January class. It looks really complex, but it's actually really doable and really fun as an introduction to sculpture. You take some fresh clay and some pre-made little sculptures that you've done, little leaves and vines and things like that, and just attach it to the wet clay and leave space for um, a check button to go there. I, I love it. It was um, a lot of fun to teach uh, when I've done it before. It takes a while for all those little tchotchkes. But this is what I've been working on lately. It's really finishing up some class samples. I'm gonna have to hold them up. Yeah. They are little bird whistles. Um, and they are also made out of silver metal clay. I make um, little tiny wings to put on them. <laughs> Different sizes. Can you see that? Yeah. And this is, so this is the greenware stage of the metal clay. Um, I have made a, a body and a separate tail with a slit in it for the mouthpiece. And I've joined them together with a tone hole. And when you blow in, the mouthpiece really, um, it really uh, what's, funnels the air. It makes it um, go directly toward that tone wedge, like blowing across a Coke bottle. And you're trying to catch the other side. You have to really get your mouth to blow the air in a, in a concentrated way. And um, so then I had to join the mouthpiece to that. And then you get to decorate it any way you want. So that's kind of fun. Um, it's one, one of the first forms that I made as a whistle person. Um, and then I made um, one that also meant something to me, which is a whistle ring. Um, this is from a long time ago, and uh, my student said, oh, you did Noah's Ark, and um, I hadn't, it hadn't even occurred to me. <laughs> it's definitely sea life, but the two little animals um, are companions. It's called, um, <laughs> stop, sorry, <laughs> journey companion. My dog is trying to get my attention right now. It's called Journey Companion. It's about the creative process. It's a metaphor I've been working with a long time about how boats and riding on a boat will get you somewhere if you just trust the current. But you have to be active also to keep balance. So it's kind of a, a mutual um, combination. And I was inspired by a Greek burial urn to make these um, little animals. They were horses on that. Um, and they were guarding this uh, vessel that was buried with somebody. 
And what struck me about them is they were not menacing in any way, but they were very strong. They, they had their feet planted, um, but didn't have to be negative to do that. It's just strength. I really loved those. Um, this is actually the first whistle that I ever made. It's called the Fish Man. It's a tube whistle. So if you, if you don't know what metal clay is, the greenware becomes silver. This is already 90% silver that I've worked with like a water-based clay. And the silver particles are mixed with a cellulose binder and water. That's it. And so you work with it like clay. This doesn't look like silver, but it is. It's water-based. I can rehydrate it anytime. I can sculpt with it. I can form pellets with it that would then connect with other pieces. And I would use slip, just like you do in ceramics, watered down clay to glue them together. And you get everything made, um, and then at the end you fire it. My little um, bale broke off. <laughs> but then you fire it, either with a torch or in a can. And it, it's a perfectly metal clay that I use. And then all the binder and buff, the metal particles come together in a profit level. And it's it's pure silver in the end, which is amazing. <laughs> Some of the other whistle forms that I like working with, oops, this way, and this one. These are all classes that I teach. <laughs> you have an audience, oh, Donna. I'm having fun making little birdies right now. I'm having trouble otherwise. I really have not been able to concentrate since the pandemic started. It's, it's been annoying to me. So I'm just starting. Yeah, I think that's a, it seems like a common story that I've been hearing is that people, um, you know, have just had a hard time getting into that creative zone and really focusing on their work. Some people have, have seen it as an opportunity and are excited and other people are just kind of blocked by it. Um, and I also have heard quite a lot of stories right now about people who um, have been creating things that, to share with other people. So I have a good friend who's a jeweler who uh, just made 65 pair of earrings that she is just sending <laughs> to all of her artist friends because she needs to feel connected to other people. And that was kind of the only thing she could make. It was like thinking about other people. She is a paper artist. And so she does like folded paper jewelry and she picked pages out of magazines that made like reminded her of her friends and then would make them a pair of earrings and that was what kind of motivated her so it's That's been a tricky great. time donna i one of the things that i have always uh, admired about your work and and about the about precious metal clay um is the ability to to sculpt with it to make something three-dimensional um out of metal without having to carve it or uh you know use rough tools and sand like to be able to, to sculpt um, and I've always loved the dimensionality of your work it's not just rolling pattern into a flat piece even though that can be beautiful but it's there's so much more to it than that I've always loved that um, hollow forms are my thing it's really fun. yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> someone asked um, how do you get the tones of the whistle to be so well-rounded and not weak and airy? Now that is something I teach in class. This is what I'm useful for as a teacher because the concept of a whistle is very simple, but to actually make it happen requires some troubleshooting. So it's the angle of the mouthpiece up and down, left and right, um, how far away the mouthpiece is from that other edge of the hole to catch the wind, how wide that hole is. And it, it, it takes, um, I can hear it. When the students are at the point where they actually blow a note, um, it's often breathy or it's, 
it squeaks or it just doesn't work at all. And I can actually hear someone across the room and I'll say, oh, you need to um, make sure the walls are a little bit tighter on the, on the hole <laughs> and, or make adjustments for them that way. So I've, yeah, I've learned a lot of things about this miniature whistle stuff um, the hard way. And um, it's, it's a whole different thing, I think, than working in clay, clay, earth clay, because you can get away with a lot more, I think, when you're working bigger. So. Great. Thank you so much for sharing, Donna. I appreciate it. That was it. fun. That was fun. Good. Um, we're going to have Liz share. Uh, Liz is a contemporary craft staff member. And then um, I would love it if there are other people in the call that want to share. Just chat me uh, and tell me that you're ready to go. Because um, after Liz, we don't have anybody and there's quite a few people on this call. So please, nothing is too small. Um, we would love to see whatever you've been working on. So Liz, take it away. So I have also been crocheting. That is one of my main uh, mediums. And I'm not quite ambitious enough to take on something that's purely aesthetic. Most of my creations are generally functional. So right now I am, as we are on this call and while I'm on calls all the time now, um, I'm going to be working on baskets for my pantry. Um, so I'm making a prototype just out of Red Heart yarn because that's what I have handy so that I can kind of see um, what works, what doesn't, what size I need, how much yarn I need, what I can actually get out to the store and get nicer yarn. Um, so this is just a really basic and probably can't see it very well because it's black. Um, just a single crochet, start out with eight, increase by eight each round until it gets to the size that you want. So it's kind of octagonal at this point and it's a little warpy. So I'll probably need to block it before I start building up the sides. But um, it's just something nice. I was a little bit inspired by Jim's baskets. I don't quite have the patience to work that small. Um, so I am working with um, a triple yarn thickness and a really big hook to make it go quicker and to make it really squishy. Um, mostly I just really wanted something that I could throw in the wash if I forget about vegetables and they get gross. Um, so if you haven't done, if you crochet and you haven't done a multi-strand, um, project before it's really easy you end up I can't I can't explain how to start it I just it happens not quite there with with the words but um you have so basically you have your single string that's coming out of the skein and you have a loop and so when you're working up here you have three strands and then whenever you get low you pull you pull the single one through so you get this little hitch here, and so then you keep having three, so you don't have to unwind your whole skein and have three equal skeins. It's been really nice. That was a technique I learned on another project that I was working on for my sister, and I'm really happy with the results that it gives you a really nice, sturdy um, piece without having to work with really, really bulky yarn. Um, the other project that I I finished a little while ago and is one of my first just aesthetic pieces is um, a book. Um, I took a, a book binding class with Anne Murray last year. She's a really great visiting artist that we have had in the past. I think we're planning to have again. Definitely recommend her classes. She's awesome. Um, so she, sorry, she took, she taught a Coptic stitch binding class, which is um, an exposed binding um, that um, is braided. And so I made a book for my sister-in-law who got married last weekend, um, her, it, the legal part, and then the actual celebration will be at an, another time. Um, so here's the, the cover and the spine and the inside. So there's this really nice blue and gold leaf paper that I also did around the signature so that the so that the binding is is navy on the side as well. 
Um, don't know if you can see this. The cover is this really lovely pebbly texture. It was a real pain to glue because it's also textured on the back because it's embossed. Um, so it required a couple extra days of pressing to make sure that it stuck. But um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I hope that she'll really like it. And um, you know that once I'm able to give this to her, it means that we're able to be out and together again. So um, it's be a really nice thing to be able to do. That's great. Thank you, Liz. Um, Liz just moved into a new house. So now she has to make her pantry fancy with hand crocheted baskets for all of her food. So I think that that's going to be really great. Um, Liz, people really love the book. Said you have a lucky sister-in-law. Um, and everybody's amazed by your three-strand technique and uh, wanted to know if it can convert from knitting to crochet. You've answered the questions. You've saved people from their research. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure. I haven't tried it with knitting. Um, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. I'll have to think through it while we're on the call. Maybe I'll pull <laughs> out some, some needles and try it. Great. Thanks so much, Liz. Okay, anybody else? I mean, there's a lot of you on the call. There has to be somebody. Tammy, do you have anything new? Yeah? You want to share? Can't hear you yet. Okay, I'm unmuted. There we go. Okay, so let me get a few things. Guys, don't be shy. I would love to see anything. Debbie, I wanna see some of your books and I know you do other things too, not just books. I know you've dabbled in everything. I'm, I'm gonna start calling on people. It's gonna, it's gonna get rough here in show and tell. Okay, so um, I started out with my with a bunch of quail eggs that I got at um, the Asian store, and I started putting let me see this gallery wire around them. And then. I put a little hinge on. And then it opens up into this little cute little thing. Okay. And Is there a clasp on the other side, Tammy? There's not a clasp. Um, I haven't figured that out yet. Um, but they're very, very delicate, and I've ruined a couple dozen so far just trying to figure stuff out. Um, and I have another one here that let's see, actually has is connected, but you can you can see through it, and it has these little handles on the side and then I made a little stand for it with magnets and BBs and uh, this little filigree thing. Oops. Oops. Okay. Oh, no, no, it's oh. fine. It's he's fine. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, you terrified everybody. <laughs> So that's what I've been working on. So I've got a, a couple working on the silver one, but um, the other piece cracked. So I need to go buy some more quail eggs. They're really hard to saw in half. I use like a jeweler saw to saw them in half. And I coat them with a little like clear nail polish first to strengthen them and um and then sawing them it's it it takes like a half an hour because they chip so easily so were they i mean was there still like egg inside of them or were they empty or they yeah yeah there was still yeah. egg inside of them okay um so then you have to wash them out once you get them and then there's a membrane inside that peels 
that you have to peel off. Okay. And uh, and it it just takes a little while. And I when I do the um, actually I made I made my own hinge, a couple of my own hinges. Um, but you have to be real careful too when you're when you're drilling holes in the in the quail egg because they can crack really easily. How um how is the gallery wire adhered to the egg? It's um adhered with uh, some glue as well as the the little nails. Okay. Um, so yeah, I know glue is sometimes um, a really a four letter word <laughs> in um, jewelry making, but I love it. Yeah, I'm there with you. Um, oh, did you eat the egg inside? Uh, no, a lot of times it, it um, the shell gets inside there. Um, and I've tried different methods where I boil them first and then try and saw them in half. Um, but I found the best way to do it is um, the raw egg. For some reason it, it, it's stronger. Um, so yeah. Well, that's general consensus, Tammy, is that people love them. Uh, <laughs> they want them. <laughs> uh, they are like hardcore Fabergé. Um, and everybody seems to really love them. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, oh, I would say Pam was saying that, um, that you ruined a couple dozen eggs and she said that that's what applies to her quilting as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Those are amazing. Um, Okay, so I apparently I twisted Debbie's arm hard enough that she decided that she would share some of her creations. So, Debbie. Hi there. Um, Hi. Let me grab it real quick. Okay, go for it. Um, wasn't, wasn't really prepared for this. Um, about, oh, I think it was August or September of last fall, I, I saw on Instagram uh, a young book conservator from Boston by the name of Graham Patton, P-A-T-T-E-N. And he developed essentially what's a 3D Jacob's Ladder. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Jacob's Ladder. You see them in children's toys. It's the blocks where you hold it up and they come down like a waterfall. You turn it and it comes down the other way. He essentially came up with a carousel book that does that same function and he called it his continuously convoluting carousel and he developed this and presented it to i think it was the uh, bookbinders guild symposium in philadelphia in the fall and i immediately you'll be happy to hear this allison i immediately reached out to him to ask do you teach <laughs> and uh, he said that he had not given that much thought but he would um, and we, there are several of us who have been anxiously awaiting directions from him, and he's still working on them. And um, I just lost my patience. So I used the photos that he had posted to Instagram and the uh, female artist who had done the drawings on the inside of the, of the book. Um, she had posted some pictures. So using only those pictures, I came up with, I figured out how to do the binding. This is only um, this is only a mock-up. It is not pretty by any stretch of the imagination. But let's see if I can get back. But this is the book, and then you pull it into. Oops, it's going to be difficult to do up in the air. But you pull it into a circle, a carousel, and then again, if I can. So it's almost like a kaleidoscope and you can continuously turn it again really hard to do when you're holding this up in the air so so that's the and then the sides are you know the different drawings that so that is graham patton's <laughs> continuously can 
convoluting carousel. That is amazing. People are you're kind of in awe. I mean, I, I believe physically my mouth was open. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> you now caught a glimpse of what it's like to watch me sleep. Um, no, that, that's so cool, Debbie. I know you had told me before about uh, Graham and I had checked out his website and it's, it's really amazing. Yeah, he, he's also done, um, for those that like to work in metal, he has done a jointed metal covered book where as you open the cover, the little squares of metal all shift on joints. It is, it is fabulous, it's fabulous. So all credit to Graham. I'm just happy that I was able to figure it out. <laughs> well, I mean, that right in itself is, is got to be a miracle. I mean, I think you are a genius because <laughs> to look at picture and figure out how to do that has to be uh, so tough. Um, I, I know one of the things I've been really interested in is doing some workshops or creating some workshops um, that cross different mediums. So I would love to do like a bookbinding workshop, but where you make enameled metal covers for it in the metal studio. Um, or the bookbinding workshop that we had scheduled with Ann Murray, we're working on a date to reschedule that, was using wooden covers. Um, so to combine like the wood and the paper, or to combine, you know, the metal with the paper and the fiber arts, I think there's so many possibilities um, that I would love to explore. So um, okay. I'll have to check out that other metal book by Graham. All Maybe. right. Thanks for letting me share. Thanks, Debbie. All right, unless there's anybody else who wants to jump in, I won't twist any more arms. I'm sorry, thank you, Debbie, very much. Um, oh wait, somebody said uh, the, oh, can you share again the name of the creator of the book? Okay, it's Graham Patton, P-A-T-T-E-N. And I think on Instagram, he just uses his name. Okay, and I'll tell you what, Debbie, we will, we will, find his information and we'll make sure that we share it with everybody in our follow-up email. Um, so once again, thank you everybody so much for participating. We do have another um, show and tell scheduled for next week and I'm sure we will continue with them. Tomorrow's paper cutting workshop is really gonna be great. The instructor again is Jessica Elkern Brown. If you wanna check out her website, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so if you are looking for a way to spend an hour and a half and have some fun tomorrow, please consider joining us. And next week for the Handmade Paper Workshop with Katie DeMent. Um, I hope that everybody is hanging in there. I hope this helps, uh, helps you feel a sense of community with other people who are crafting and creating. Um, and we are so excited for the day that we get to physically all be back together again and welcome you into our new home um, at Contemporary Craft. So thanks again for joining us. Everybody have a really great day and I hope that we see you very soon. Bye-bye.